friends, welcome to another episode of Making Disciples. Now, I said there wasn't going to be any any in August. I know I said that, I know I said that, I know I said that. But see, this is a bit of a special edition, kind of early August extra episode. Uh, I got the opportunity to uh, spend a bit of time with Ian Henderson from The Naked Truth. Uh, leads this incredible ministry uh, just talking about porn and elevating the conversation around porn. And I went to uh, his conference, the P Word conference, a couple of years ago. And it was so good. Uh, and then heard that they were doing another one online it's an online conference looking at pornography and it's like hey this would be a great opportunity to just talk about porn uh, from a discipleship perspective you know god wants us to walk in wholeness and wellness he wants to walk free from the things that entrap us uh, things that entrap us are things of the heart and things of the mind and uh, if you are someone who uh, regularly uh is thinking about unhelpful things, porn, then you find yourself trapped uh, in in this cycle of, of use. And I just love what, what these guys are doing. And we don't talk about porn enough in the church, um, partly because you can't talk about it all the time. But it's also not appropriate, you know, with kids around very often. So this is a great opportunity for us to talk about porn. So uh, I hope you find this episode interesting. And what I would say is... If you struggle with pornography, don't struggle on your own. Let somebody in. Let somebody into that. And the guys at Naked Truth, I can't more highly recommend them and looking at what they are doing. But it may also be that you want to check out something like SA Sex uh, Anonymous or or something similar uh, to that. But please do not be on your own. You cannot handle any form of of addiction on your own if you don't like the word addiction i i I get that but if you are regularly using something to medicate yourself uh, it may well be an addiction more than just a problem Uh, so here we go jump into this interview with ian henderson talking about porn Ian Henderson, welcome to Making Disciples. It's so good to have you with me today. Thank you for giving me a bit of your time. Oh, it's really good to be able to join you. Looking forward to it. I listen to this podcast, so it's great to be able to be part of it today. Oh, fab. Well, that's great. So this is going to go out in August. I think we've agreed this is going to be like an August. I've told everybody there isn't going to be one in August. So I think this will be yeah. a special edition <laughs> August yeah. Uh, podcast. There's no link between pornography and August. It's not like it suddenly <laughs> gets worse on your summer holidays. Uh, but it's a good time to actually reflect on on porn, isn't it? So let's just, you know, why is porn use particularly, or masturbation and porn, why is it a discipleship issue? Why would we be talking about it on a discipleship podcast? Well, I mean, I think for lots of people, it's porn robs people in all sorts of different ways it robs people of their mental health their relationships potentially some of the their calling or things that god has put in their hearts for their future but one of the one of the ways without question that porn robs people is their their connection with jesus you know i think the level of kind of Shame that people feel. I mean, we constantly hear Christians say, when I'm struggling with this issue, I, I, I begin to ask myself, you know, what's wrong with me? Am I, am I not a proper Christian? Why, why are my prayers not working around this issue? Why, why is this so difficult? Um, and, and so it doesn't take long, I think, for people to uh, find connection between the, the thing that they're struggling with and then their relationship with God. Um, but also, I think, as disciples, we want to be people who are um, wholehearted, don't we? You know, as people are following Jesus, we want to do that in a wholehearted way that, that we haven't compartmentalized our, our prayer life and our, our Bible reading with what's going on, uh, you know, late at night in our bedroom. We, we want these things to be integrated. And, and, and so when, when we want to be people who are devoted to Jesus and following him well as, as disciples, if we see something that is separating us uh, from him and his best for our life, then then straight away that obviously becomes a discipleship matter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that. I was talking to a guy that I support and, um, you know, he's just recently kind of connected up like his intimacy with God, his closeness with God and his porn mm. use. And he mm. recognizes that actually when he's uh, 
you know, not just heavily using porn, but you just using porn that has a detrimental effect on his intimacy with God. He, he just knows he's, you know, either if it's because he knows he's, he's got sin that needs to be dealt with, actually it's more to do with the fact that he feels guilty uh, mm. and, and therefore just removes himself just slightly from those times of worship because there's that, there's that guilt uh, that's sat in there. Yeah. And, and I think also what, what we, we often hear people talk about is people then, if they are carrying some of that guilt, um, they then this self disqualify uh, their, you know, their service in church, for example, you know, with churches asking for people to step up in, in leadership or to get involved in this thing or, or to serve in that way. And people go, well, I, I don't qualify for that because I'm, I'm battling with this thing. You know, porn is, uh, so I, I'm, I would be a hypocrite to be involved in, in some way. And, and so that's, that's another way that we then miss out on something God wants to do in and through us because we've kind of decided somehow we're not good enough for it because of a porn use. But, but also I think what's really interesting is it goes the other way. So for example, I think when we, we are doing well, maybe in some of those practices of discipleship, you know, take, take, for example, fasting, you know, if, mm-hmm. if we take something like fasting and, and we kind of try to include that in our rule of life and the way that we want to live as, as a, as a follower of Jesus. And we want to fast. What, what we find is people who take hold of a practice like fasting find that if they can say no uh, to food for 24 hours or 12 hours or whatever it is on a regular basis, actually that seems to equip them much more to be able to say no to some of the other stuff fleshly stuff that's going on and you like pornography um and so actually there's this this sort of positive connection between our discipleship practices uh and our ability maybe to to kind of do well around an issue like pornography i think what's at the crux of it though is for loads of porn users porn seems to be less about sex obviously sex is in in the mix uh, but for more and more, it seems to be a way of coping with life. You know, it's a, it's a self-soothing. It's a way of uh, self-medicating in some sense. You know, you're dealing with something like a pandemic in, <laughs> going on in the world. And how, how, how do you just get through another difficult day? Well, for many, uh, maybe some might reach out for an extra glass of wine or a bit more chocolate. But for, for many, porn has just become a quick, easy, instant answer to just some of those mental health challenges, some of those kind of self-soothing needs. And, and again, the moment we start to, to find any, anything um, that we turn to other than, than Jesus, when, when we're at those places of, of feeling low, that, that's going to be detrimental to our discipleship and our, our following him and loving him well. Can we just quantify porn for a moment? Because sure. there are those of us that will hear that word and will just directly think of a particular kind of video that you might go and watch on the internet. Um, but actually, porn is a wide breadth of stuff. Mm. And I've uh, had people in our church who would clearly say that they don't use porn. But if you talk to them, they are reading some pretty sm- uh, smutty novels. Yeah. And, you know, what's the difference? Like, what, what, um, what would we quantify as porn? Let's ask that question. What is pornography? Well, I mean, if you want a dictionary definition, it would be writings, pictures, which could be pixels or it could be hand drawn manga style pictures, films, and photos that are designed to stimulate sexual excitement. Uh, and I would probably add to that definition uh, potentially and make profit for someone as well um and so absolutely right you you could be reading you could be reading blog posts actually you could be reading novels uh and if it if it has been created to stimulate sexual incitement in you if they're trying to turn you on for whatever reason probably to sell something somewhere down the road um then then i think it fits that category um and so it's yeah i mean i think it's partly the medium but it's also partly the the function what's it what's it trying to achieve what is which is the difference between say for example 
you know, if you're walking around a museum and you walk into a room full of Greek statues that are all, you know, completely naked uh, and you've got your granny with you because she loves museums, you're not necessarily watching or looking at porn with your granny in a museum uh, because maybe that's not what it was designed for. That's not why it's there. I mean, maybe even when it was made, it was, but it's not why the curators put it in that room necessarily. Mm-hmm. Whereas someone could be watching you know, some something on YouTube, some kind of pop video or something on, on YouTube, and there's no nudity. There may not even be any sex per se, but the way it's filmed, the way that things are happening, what's going on in that uh, is deliberately seeking to turn you on. That probably fits, you know, that category, that definition of pornography mm. more because actually that director or and that, that singer and everybody involved in that project knows sex sells so mm. they want more clicks they want you to watch it again and so they're using sex as a means to selling which is why some of our netflix stuff that we watch probably fits that category even though you know it's not on a porn site but mm. you know they're using sex to <laughs> to try and sell you yeah. something and this is the point isn't it and i think let's just dismantle when we talk about porn users very quickly we think of a particular person in a in a in a darkened room uh for many hours watching something but actually i, I saw a youtube video recently that talked about the top 10 most rewound video cassette moments and it was a little bit tongue-in-cheek but it, you know it, it was you know uh, the terminator the sex scene in terminator most rewound and rewatched scene and it kind of yeah. walked, you know, i was like gosh actually most of these um, some of them were just grotesque head explosions uh, but actually most of them were somehow sex related and, and and we in our minds think porn is this thing over here in, in this dark mm. room but actually it is anything that is there to titillate and to captivate our hearts if we rewind the video cassette in the old vhs language if there's that moment of going back and replaying then there is a question of hey, what is this um yeah. what is yeah. this yeah, it's absolutely. just helpful, isn't it? Because I, you know, I was preaching a little while ago at our church and I mentioned Fifty Shades of Grey and there was a particular number of faces that dropped when I said that this was you know, just as bad as, as something else you might watch. And at the end, I had a conversation with one of our female congregation who said, you know, it's not porn because it's not. But as we talked it through, she mm-hmm. started to say, that, actually, no, this is, this is actually more than what I've let on. It's not just some light reading. Um, can I ask yeah. you this question? You know, why is it then that these things that would fall into that pornography bracket, why is it that they're more than just unhelpful? Uh, why is it that they're more than just unhelpful? Well, I mean, I think there's, there's um, that's a complex question, really, because, for example, take the shift from VHS to uh digital um you know more and more we're understanding some of the impact that digital uh pornography uh has on us as physical beings you know our the ways our brain works for example the way our body works more and more research is is being released that is kind of showing that uh online porn is a super stimuli to to the to the brain and the reward system in the brain so it affects the way our brain uh, is wired and fires and so that can cause addiction um, and there's you know there's a lot of in-depth research around that for example it can cause things like erectile dysfunction in men as, as early as their 20s is something that uh, doctors are discovering in a, and and perhaps that wasn't happening in the analog days in the same way because one of the things about digital porn online porn and, and websites is you can keep scrolling for hours and hours you can keep clicking and 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 so that seems to impact our brain in a slightly different way but then you then you have the impact it can have on relationships so for example 96 percent of marriages in one survey of divorce lawyers cited um obsessive porn use as as a key factor in the breakdown of the relationship we we work with partners of porn users at naked truth and you know they talk about how particularly the the hidden nature of that porn use you know maybe decades of lying about the fact that they've been using porn um and the betrayal that 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 kind of brings with it uh feels the same as if someone had a a, an affair with a real person in real life um you know irl people use that phrase in real life don't they it feels the same as irl and you know that that's 
sometimes I think when when people use porn, perhaps one of the the justifications people use is, well, at least I'm only looking at this. You know, I'm only watching films. I'm not actually cheating on anyone. Uh, but you talk to partners, and they say, well the pain feels the same um another huge reason why it's not just kind of an unhelpful habit is is often not always as you say uh you know if you're reading a book maybe this is slightly different but often it involves human beings uh who in some way are being objectified or in some way are are you know are, are being used for your consumption to you're consuming them as product in some way and there's a very dark and, and murky world behind a lot of that. Uh, w- stories of exploitation and coercion are endless. One, probably the biggest porn site in um, a kind of uh, sort of online is, is Pornhub. Um, 44 billion hits in one year, 115 million a day, which when you think about the fact that the World Cup had something like 28 million views i think uh uh, not world cup euros Mm. final had that 115 million suddenly you go oh my goodness that is huge Mm. well at the beginning of this year they they had to remove or they 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 did remove because of some legal uh stuff that's going on and, and court stuff that's going on in the states uh 10 million of films on or videos because there was coercion or abuse or exploitation yeah. or non-consent. So, so I think part of what we've got to recognize is that this isn't just something that is this affecting me and how I view myself or my relationship with God. Obviously, that's key, but it's impacting potentially those that we want to have relationship with or already are in relationship with those that we may never meet, but are on the other side yeah. of a screen. You know, that yeah. that's some of the reasons why this is perhaps more yeah. than just an unhelpful habit. And it's interesting you, what you were just talking about, but during the pandemic, you know, porn use has skyrocketed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I use the BBC app a number of times. It popped up just to say the value of this particular porn site had tripled during the pandemic. And, uh, there was, you know, quite a lot of little bits of conversation online just about the growth of, of pornography use. You know, what's the link between isolation and porn? Uh, you know, what is that? Uh, what, what's going on there? Well, I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I read recently an Ofcom um, survey or report uh, that, that said that 50%, uh, so I think actually it may have been 49%, of British adults watch porn during the pandemic, uh, according to Ofcom during the month of September. So that, that wasn't even when we had the strictest lockdown restrictions. Um, I mean, I think there is, as we said earlier, there is probably a connection between the sort of idea of self soothing. Um, and so I think when people are struggling, when they're kind of looking just to feel a little bit better about themselves and about their day, porn feels like an easy answer to that. Mm. Um, so I think that's one of the reasons where, where, where the link comes, but, but also porn thrives in secret, you know, the part of the power and the pull of porn, I think is, it's something that, that you can do in secret um part of why i started naked truth god used proverbs 9 as as part of me kind of thinking this through and proverbs 9 talks about uh both wisdom and folly as these kind of uh people who make an invitation to um well wisdom's invitation is to the banquet and to this feast mm. and it, it represents you know life to the full and jesus picks up the analogy himself uh, this idea of come and so wisdom says come to this feast i've prepared it's going to be amazing enjoy it and and it's mm. representative of what it means to have life to the full in god but in the same chapter there's this other character called folly and she says come into my house because Food eaten in secret is delicious and stolen water is sweet. And then it says, but what her guests do not know is that in her house is the realm of death. Uh, And it's really interesting contrast uh, because they're both kind of inviting you to eat and have food. And uh, but but Folly's uh, this character, Folly, is inviting something that is stolen, which absolutely, if you think about pornography, you know, it is 
it's intimacy that is stolen uh, and presented for you to consume. Um, but but also there's something about the secrecy. There's something about it's it's sweet when we do it in secret that, that it's maybe hard for us to fully understand why it feels more powerful, more enticing. But there seems to be truth there. Uh, and, and we see that in, in that that chapter in Proverbs. So I think that's part of it. I mean, I think that I think. I think all um, addiction and, you know, a lot of addiction tends to thrive in isolation, doesn't it? And, you know, when you start drinking on your own, that's probably a, a sign that something has shifted a little bit uh, in your dependency on this thing. Um, and, and I think porn, porn is enticing because it's something you do on your own. But I think, I think like many addictions, that, that isolation just kind of causes it to grow as well. That's good. Can I just ask you then, so how, how, you know, what, how do you lead people or what do you promote for people as a way of support? Uh, if somebody is uh, struggling with porn, they've been trying to do something about this for a little while, and they're just not getting anywhere. Uh, you know, what would you say to them? What, what's out there for them? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that uh, I would, I would always say, and again, this is true of of perhaps any kind of dependency or life controlling issue is it is incredibly difficult to find uh, a change on your own. Um, And, and I think, again, that's one of the potential things we lie to ourselves about. Um, And because there's shame attached to, to porn, you know, it's easier to say, well, surely if I just kind of try a little bit harder and I work a little bit harder, and maybe if I pray a little bit harder, I can, I can sort this out. Um, But I've yet really to find anybody who finds complete freedom from, from this without asking for help both from god but often from others um and so one of the things i would say is you have to take the courageous and let's be honest the 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 kind of humble step um of saying i can't do this i can't do this on my own i need help i mean it's not it's not a coincidence that in the 12 step movement you know those first few steps uh, are about submitting yourself to the fact that I can't manage this on my own. Yeah. I need to submit myself to something bigger than me. Um, and for us as Christians, we acknowledge that's 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 Jesus. He 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 is ultimately the thing we want to submit to and say, I can't do this without you. But then Jesus says, actually, I've given you community as well to walk with you through this. Uh, and so, um, I mean, we offer as Naked Truth, um, a, a range of support that is confidential, that can be accessed anytime, anywhere. Uh, some of that is is kind of on-demand kind of video courses that you, you can kind of work through in your own time and on your own. But actually, the, the most of it is joining groups on Zoom. Uh, so we have, for example, a course called Click to Kick, which is an eight-week course. And you're with five or six other people who are in the same boat as you. They probably don't go to your church, which Mm. makes life a little easier. You don't kind of have to kind of look people in the eye every Sunday who know what you're going through. Although that can be really good if you feel you can get to that place. But if that feels a bit too scary, this is a really good first step of Mm. acknowledging you might need other people to help you, but but not necessarily people you're going to be seeing all the time. Um, And that's facilitated by one of our team. And they'll kind of journey you through giving you tools, giving you some things that you can put in place, some helpful um, ways in which you can begin to process and see change. But ultimately, it's about having other people too who you're accountable to, but also are praying for you and, and, and believe in you and, and can support you. So that's, that's one of the things that we offer, for example. But ultimately, I think it's about saying, I can't do this. And so if that's going and speaking to your church leader or it's joining something like Click to Kick, um, I think that first step of acknowledging you need help is essential. Yeah, yeah. That, that's so good. I mean, in the church, there's so much uh, guilt and shame around this. It's really hard to bring it up. Uh, I heard somebody say uh, not too long ago that uh, if a church leader is not talking about porn, it could well be because he doesn't or she doesn't realize it's even a problem. 
It's not a problem mm. for them, so it can't be a problem for other people. Or they're not talking about porn because it's a problem for them and they don't want to talk mm. about it. Um, yeah. And which is oh, I'd add a third one, Chris, which is yeah. perhaps they just don't feel equipped yeah. to deal with the, the kind of fallout of talking about it. So I think, you know, uh, if, if when you went to theological college, you know, did it come up when you were being trained, you know, in terms of how do you pastorally walk alongside someone who's struggling with porn? Um, yeah. Probably not. So I think there's probably that third category of leaders are going, I probably recognize that this might be an issue in my congregation. I just do not know where to begin uh, in, in supporting them. And so I, I'm worried if I start talking about this more, it's a pastoral can of worms that I'm not equipped to deal with. I think that's another one. Yeah. Which is in a good moment just to ask the question, you know, if you if there are church leaders or there are just individuals out there that want to know more and they want to be more involved and more equipped for supporting people with porn use, you know, what's coming up for you guys? What have you got coming up? And this isn't just a sales pitch. We, you know, this is a genuine kind of a, a thing that's coming up, isn't isn't it? Yeah, so we, we, we're definitely wanting to address that. Um, I mean, ultimately, as I say, we, we have programs and recovery and support for users and for partners and people can find out about that but we also recognize that the the relationships that people can have with with their church their congregation their leaders is so so important and long long term that it's it's vital that the local church and church leaders and small group leaders and and all the different ways in which we we walk alongside people that people feel equipped to, to deal with this as well. I mean, for example, I imagine if someone was going to disclose a struggle with porn, they're more likely to talk to their small group leader than perhaps their, their vicar or their senior leader. Yeah. Uh, and so how, how do those people feel equipped? And so we are doing an event at the end of September from the 28th to the 30th. It's an online uh, conference uh, called the P Word Conference. And um, we, we recognize, we, we read a survey, for example, where 93% of church leaders said that they recognize that porn is a bigger problem than it's ever been before in their churches. Yet those same leaders, uh, only 7% said they had any kind of support in place for people struggling with porn. So there is, without question, there is a gap between leaders who recognize there's an issue and them and then actually providing practical help um and so this event really we we've asked we have over 40 contributors some who are experts in the field of clinical support so therapists and counselors who who will be able to just kind of really help leaders think through what does it look like to walk long term with someone who's struggling with this issue partners as and spouses as well as users but also people are addressing this issue from from other angles as well so uh, we'll have experts and in, in terms of supporting parents for example which is another massive part of a congregation who are worrying about this issue for a different reason mm. not necessarily because they're struggling with it themselves but they they know their young people are working work uh, you know growing up in a society where well, for example, one in three uni students um, in a recent survey said they learned more from porn about sex and relationships than they did from any formal education. Mm. Uh, and as a parent of a 17 year old, I'm, I'm kind of saying, OK, um, uh, what, how, how equipped do I feel uh, to have these kind of conversations? Um, and so we're, we've got um, contributors talking about this issue from that perspective. We've also got people just sharing their own stories of hope and freedom. Um, we've got some people from the industry, former, we've got one guy who's a former porn performer, who's now a church leader, uh, talking about what, what it's like within the industry. Um, mm. And, and others who are working around some of the justice issues and legislation change and things as well, which is connected to this issue. So a really broad event over 72 hours um, and online, so accessible from anywhere. Um, and so, yeah, the P word conference, I would really recommend as a way that people could begin to get equipped to talk about this and tackle this issue in their own local settings. So that's the P, P word conference dot come and that's the 28th to 30th of september i came to the first one and it was absolutely fantastic so cut more 
uh, highly recommend it. Uh, for me, I just want to end with, um, so, you know, I've talked before about pornography for me and, um, you know, Ephesians, uh, sorry, uh, Philippians 4a, I just found this always so helpful. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. I think for me, there was a big realization when it wasn't just an academic choice to be free from porn. Actually, it was a heart choice. What do I need to put in place to protect my heart? And he says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if, uh, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things when i look at porn you know porn is not any of those things uh and therefore i you know for me just recognizing that this was never going to be something that was life-giving uh for yeah. me in any shape or form so you know guarding our hearts and minds needing jesus in that i think you've already referenced it we do a lot of work uh here with you know recovering drug addicts uh alcohol and what we notice is food addiction uh, porn goes often alongside that. Alcohol addiction, porn goes alongside that. And sometimes we need medical care and help and some program as well as Jesus. Uh, yeah. you know, Jesus is a huge part of the, the, the gap and the need, but also we need that physical support as well. So we say to recovering uh, alcohol addict, you know, you get to a 12-step program and get to church. And these yeah. two things will get you through. Uh, but uh, you do need both of those those two things. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, we're we're these hybrid beings, aren't we? <laughs> the, mm. of, of of flesh and spirit. And uh, you know, God made us that way. And and so I think it's absolutely right that that in terms of how He might bring healing and wholeness to us is going to be yeah, absolutely what He's going to do as He breathes His Spirit into our spirit. But also, there's there if you've got a physical dependency going on in your brain and yeah i absolutely believe that that there's room for both here um final thought chris just to say as well just to mention to listeners is in that kind of uh you just reading that verse reminded me uh, we've put a couple of bible plans uh, around this issue on the U version bible app i know that's something that a lot of people mm. use as as a way of just trying to dig deeper into their relationship with god uh, so we have one that's called control alt delete how to kind of reboot and restart your your relationship with god and and quit porn um and then also one called um because i mentioned proverbs before porn hub versus proverbs uh, and so there's two two plans there that I just we've got some scripture there and some some you know some good uh, advice as well alongside those those bits of scripture that people might want to check out if they're interested. Ian, thank you so much for your time. Naked Truth, you can Google that if you want to check out the ministry as well. But thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate you. Thank you. It's been really great to be involved. Thank you. See you soon. Grace and peace.